If you take a piece of zinc and put it into a copper solution, that's a spontaneous reaction. And what you're going to get is the zinc losing electrons to the Cu2 positive ions in that, say, copper 2 nitrate solution, and you're going to get a redox reaction. You know what? Here's the thing, though. The electron exchange will take place, obviously, right in that solution at the interface between the zinc metal and the copper in the solution. And you and I won't be able to trap the electron flow that goes from the zinc to the copper ions to be able to use that electron flow for useful work. But, if you actually separate the zinc metal from the copper solution, but find a way to connect them, and make them touch without touching, then you're going to be able to intercept that electron flow and baby we're going to make a dry cell. That's going to be a battery. That's going to be electricity. And this is what Volta, Alessandro Volta, set up that over a oh, how many, a hundred, couple hundred years ago to be able to move electrons from one place to another, intercept the flow, to be able to use that current. And so, in honor of Alessandro Volta's discovery and, and putting, it, putting these uh, chemicals together in such a fashion, we call them voltaic cells. And, but, but, you know, some people call it galvanic cells because Luigi Galvani, he was the one who actually discovered electricity. He really did. So the thing is, you can call them a voltaic cell or a, gal a galvanic cell. Regardless, you're talking about an Italian who put together uh, these things. Now, and that's pretty cool because Chem Guy's half Italian, right? Woohoo! So, um, and I just think, see, it, it, it's, it's, we're talking about electricity here, and the, uh, Italians are very, you know, passionate people. So, of course, they made the first voltaic cells. Of course, they discovered electricity. Hey, sick, this is what they are. Now, um, so here's the kind of standard setup that we're going to use, and this might look kind of funny because I, okay, I'm not the world's best artist. But look, I used colors for once. <laughs> That'll end. Now, what I did was, I, I'm saying, okay, um, and by the way, here's how this uh, question could be started off for you to have to answer. And it could be this. This is a line called cell notation, and you could be given this. And then you could be asked, with this cell notation, write, devise, draw, set up a voltaic cell that... Uh, corresponds to this cell notation. Now, cell notation is written where the anodes are on the left and the cathodes are on the right. What do those terms mean? We'll get to that in a second. But what it really means is this. If somebody gives you two different types of metals and their solutions and says, set up a spontaneous cell. Well, that's actually, and, and by the way, it's going to be spontaneous when you have two different chemicals to react together because what you're going to get is you're going to get something is going to give electrons to something else one is going to be the oxidizing agent one's going to be the reducing agent so now how do you do that on the chart if you're not getting cell notation perhaps and just you need to find out who's undergoing oxidation or reduction well what you do is you just take your list of chemicals here right i always just take the cell notation chemicals and find the highest thing on the left and the lowest thing on the right and in this case the highest one on the left is the copper ion, and the lowest on the right is the zinc metal. What that means is this, that when you take, and this is what you do standard, this is a standard setup for a cell. Draw two beakers, <laughs> okay, and then draw two metals in those beakers with solutions in them and connect the two metal pieces with a wire through a voltmeter. Now, this thing I'll explain in a second. 